Yet another Boston Bruin has entered COVID-19 protocols, while a Blue Liner is out for the season with a torn ACL. Going to update you on all the latest from the Black and Gold, as well as take a look at where they stand in the Eastern Conference at the unofficial holiday break. All that and more on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. Today is Tuesday, December 21st, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Boston Bruins your first listen every day. It's been a great year for the podcast in terms of growth and jumping on YouTube. So uh, if you have not yet subscribed, I would suggest that you do. Whether you're an Apple user or on Android, your favorite podcast app has Locked On Boston Bruins. So just search it up, hit that subscribe button. Each new daily episode will be automatically added to your feed for you to download, listen, and enjoy. We're also on YouTube. So you can search up Locked On Bruins on uh, YouTube, hit subscribe, comment over there. Great to have the conversation going. Uh, if you're on social media, the podcast is Locked NHL Bruins on both Twitter and Instagram. And you can find me, my dad jokes, and hockey tweets at Ian C. McLaren. Getting close to 8,000 followers, which is pretty crazy. Uh, so let's uh, jump on there if you haven't already. So a couple of Bruins news items dropped this morning. Uh, the first, non-COVID related, but still not good. <laughs> Uh, it was the announcement from general manager Don Sweeney that Jakobs Borrell tore his ACL in his right knee during a game against Nashville on December 2nd. He underwent successful surgery uh, at Mass General on Thursday, December 16th, and he's expected to miss the remainder of the regular season. Uh, he has appeared in 54 career NHL games with Boston with 12 assists. Of course, he's one of the guys that was drafted in the first round back in 2015. Uh, has not been a smooth path to the NHL, but to his credit, this season he very much looked like he belonged in the top six, if not the top four for the Boston Bruins. In the 10 games he played, he posted a uh, shot attempt or not he posted, but while he was on the ice, the Bruins had a shot attempt differential of 59.61. That's highest among all Bruins players. Uh, the shot attempt differential was 63.03% in Boston's favor with uh, Zborl on the ice. Expected goals, 64.97% in favor of the Bruins with him on the ice. And uh, high danger chances uh, 60% in favor of the Bruins when he was on the ice. Now, uh, he did get a lot of uh, offensive zone starts, kind of sheltered minutes, but still very encouraging numbers for Jacobs Borrell. Uh, only Jack Sean had better numbers, but he's only played in one game. Uh, and with the injury to Borrell, uh, Sean could very well be uh, a candidate for promotion uh, sometime in in the near future if they need to shake up on the blue line. But uh, very disappointing news for the Bruins, for Zborrell in particular. And Bruce Cassidy met with the media here on Tuesday morning, said it's something that he went through twice in his playing career, but with advancements in uh, you know procedures, rehabilitation, uh, he should be uh, you know back to normal uh, by next season and a contributing member in the top six for uh, for the Boston Bruins. So uh, wish Zboro all the best in his recovery. Now, another COVID uh, 
sorry, another player placed in COVID protocols this morning, and that is Bruins defenseman Brandon Carlo. He's the first defenseman added to the list, the 10th player overall, uh, and two staff members as well brings that list up to uh, 12 members of the Boston Bruins organization. Uh, what that means for Carlo, you know, out at least 10 days, I believe, and uh, just kind of pushes him back in uh, his ability to play after the break. Now, like I mentioned, Bruce Cassidy met with the media this morning. It sounds as though he is gearing up for a game on um, December 27th against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Some uncertainty about the game against the Ottawa Senators on December 9th, north of the border because of uh, restrictions right now. The league put a pause on cross-border travel. Uh, but, you know, some of these guys, uh, especially uh, Taylor Hall, uh, who joined the list on um, a couple of days ago, as well as who was the other player that uh, joined the list with Taylor Hall, uh, Curtis Lazar. They would not be eligible to play for the Bruins on the 27th, and then Carlo would be ruled out as well. So still a lot of moving pieces when it comes to if they'll be able to play on the 27th, who will be in the lineup. Uh, but the good news is, according to Bruce Cassidy, that uh, none of the players have experienced anything more than flu-like symptoms. And the majority of the players in COVID protocol have had very mild, if any, symptoms at all. He credited the vaccine status of the Bruins for uh, keeping the severity of the virus low. Uh, and it's just a matter of containing it, uh, hoping that it doesn't spread to uh, family members or children, of course, anybody who's not vaccinated. Uh, but for the time being, uh, the good news is that the Bruins who are in COVID protocols themselves uh, doing well, no symptoms. And if they do have symptoms, they're uh, just kind of mild flu-like symptoms. Um, so that was the latest from Bruce Cassidy here on Tuesday morning. Uh, the update on Zboril out for the season. Carlo added to the list. And uh, as far as he's concerned, the team is on track to play against the Pittsburgh Penguins on uh, on Monday, December 27th, uh, with the game in Ottawa still kind of up in the air because of border restrictions and things like that. I was planning to go to that game on uh, next Wednesday or two Wednesdays from now against the, the um, no, yeah, next Wednesday, against the Senators in Ottawa as part of a kind of a family visit, but we put a pin in that won't be going uh, pretty disappointing. Maybe I'll be able to go to the makeup date later on down the season, but it's for the best just to kind of stay local and uh, yeah, reduce the risk of spreading it. Bruce Cassidy did mention as well that he has not ruled himself out from going to the Olympics. He's expected to be uh, an assistant coach. He's been in touch with Tampa Bay lightning Um Head coach John Cooper, who's supposed to coach Team Canada. Possible that an announcement will come, I mean, anytime right now. But um, actually, it looks like uh, Frank Saravelli of Daily Faceoff is saying that no surprise, but the NHL, NHLPA are in agreement that NHL players will not participate in the Olympics. They have to notify the IOC. An official announcement will come perhaps as soon as today, maybe later this week. Uh, question is, will the Olympics be postponed to 2023? I guess that's an option as well. Uh, but Bruce Cassidy said he was very much looking forward to going. It was an honor to represent his country. Uh, but it looks like we're going to get an official announcement on that uh, as soon as today. Before we move on to talking about where the Bruins stand at this break, a uh, quick word about Boost Mobile. You listen to podcasts uh, probably on your phone. Uh, get the power of knowledge. You can switch to Boost Mobile for the power of saving money. Get three unlimited data lines for 30 bucks a month per line. 
and a free 5G phone when you switch so you get all the latest episodes of Locked On Boston Bruins and whatever else you listen to. Smart Lists is a big one for me. Uh, Dak Shepard's podcast, 32 Thoughts, whatever. All the Locked On podcasts as well. All on one of America's largest 5G networks. More power to save at Boost Mobile. Free phone limited to new customers, one per line. Additional restrictions apply. Offers and coverage not available everywhere for all phones or networks. See BoostMobile.com for details. Thank you again for making Locked On Boston Bruins your first listen every day. Again, free and available on all podcast platforms as well as on YouTube. So subscribe uh, for the audio as well as the video versions of the podcast. Now, during his media availability, Bruce Cassidy was asked how he thought the team had performed up to this date and what needs to happen kind of moving forward. He did say, as I've been saying for quite a while, that there are so many new faces on the team, not only the free agent signings in the summer, but also trade deadline acquisitions last year, Taylor Hall, Curtis Lazar, Mike Riley on top of uh, Eric Howla, Nick Foligno, Thomas Nosek, Derek Forbort, Linus Allmark. That's like uh, eight guys right there, almost a third of the lineup, and a brand new since last season. So they expected some bumps in the road, uh, a bit of a, you know, transition period to these new faces. Add on top of that, the stupid schedule the Bruins have had, this COVID outbreak, injuries, things have not gone necessarily according to plan. And he admitted freely that this team is not where Toronto is, not where Tampa is, not where Florida is. Say hi, Bessie. And um, yeah, he expects once they come out of this break, they will be more consistent. Uh, secondary scoring has been an issue for this team. Goaltending was a bit of an issue early on, although it did come around. And it could even improve with the addition of uh, Tuka Rask. Now, at this break, the Bruins sit in, uh, I believe, eighth in the Eastern Conference when it comes to point percentage. They're behind the Detroit Red Wings in points, three points back, but with five games in hand. They have a 577 point percentage, which is eighth in the Eastern Conference. As I've been saying quite a bit, though, their underlying numbers have been strong. They rank fourth in terms of shot attempt differential uh, at five on five. They rank second in shot differential percentage at five on five. Expected goals, they rank first. And high danger uh, chance differential, they rank third. That was one area that Bruce Cassidy said they need to work on, those high danger chances. But, uh, you know, if you look at the totals, they are 31st in the NHL with only 208 generated so far. Uh, but they've only allowed 169, which is fewest in the NHL. So that differential is 55.17% in favor of the Bruins. I put some upstairs for you. Sorry, that's um, one of the boys kicking around. Uh, the shot attempts. I'm oh, sorry, the shooting percentage is where they really need to improve. 5.76 at 5-on-5, five five, which is dead last in the NHL. Almost a half a percentage point behind the Vancouver Canucks, who are 31st. So that's kind of the situation with the Boston Bruins. Uh, in the Atlantic, just doing a quick look at power rankings. Obviously, Montreal, Ottawa, Buffalo bringing up the rear, although Buffalo five points back of the Bruins. Um, but the Bruins do have four games in hand on them. Again, five games in hand on the Red Wings, three points back, so they're easily catchable. The Red Wings with the minus 16 goal differential. Um, and then Florida, Toronto, Tampa Bay, clearly the class of the division, if not the conference. Tampa with a slight advantage over Toronto, 724 point percentage compared to 700 for Toronto. 690 for the Panthers. They're all separated by two points. So can the Bruins hang on to a playoff spot and be a wild card team? Certainly. Uh, can they compete in the postseason with 
the likes of Tampa, Toronto, Florida, and Carolina, the Capitals, even the Rangers over in the Metro. Uh, they certainly will be matched up in the first round, either with the top team in the Atlantic or the top team in the Metro, depending on which wild card spot they get, barring you know, a, a big winning streak where they're able to jump up into one of the top three spots. That would be a bit of a stretch at this point. Um, but like I said, the underlying numbers are strong. The secondary scoring needs to improve. Uh, finishing on these shot attempt differentials, shot differentials, high danger chant differentials, they need to make good on those. Uh, getting more pucks, not just on net, but towards the net with bodies in front of the net for rebound opportunities, screens, and the like. That is key for the Boston Bruins heading into the second half of the season. Again, they've only played 26 games, 56 games remaining on the schedule, so plenty of time to turn it around. Um, And I do believe there will be some roster movement for the Boston Bruins as well. Jake DeBrusque's trade request is still hanging over the team. With Jakobs Borrell being knocked out of the lineup, I would expect some uh, reinforcements being brought in on the blue line. And, um, yeah, perhaps some uh, forward depth being added as well. So that's kind of where the Bruins stand at the moment. Uh, On tomorrow's podcast, I'd be happy to take any questions that you have about this team. So do send those in on the YouTube comments at Locked NHL Bruins or at ENC McLaren on uh, Twitter or Instagram and uh, whatever questions you have about this team or the league in general uh, heading into the holiday break, I would be more than happy uh, to answer. Now, if you want to put some money down on how the Bruins will fare over the rest of the season, no better place than bet online. It's the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. They have you covered with all the props, odds and lines you need uh, with football Pro and college heading into the playoffs, pro and college basketball ramping up, hockey, boxing, UFC. You can head to their new updated desktop or mobile website, sign up today, and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit by using promo code LOCKEDON. Again, BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Use promo code LOCKEDON to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit over at BetOnline where the game starts. So last night, the NHL and the NHLPA agreed to postpone five games coming up on Thursday, the day before the holiday break, uh, meaning under the revised schedule, uh, December 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and 25th will be off days for all purposes, including travel. There will be two games played tonight, Barring any further COVID outbreaks with the teams involved, that will be Washington against Philadelphia and then Tampa at Vegas. And uh, I think that will be pretty much it for the um, play prior to the break. That um, was to help to curb further COVID spreads, put a bit, bit of a pin in the schedule to help teams kind of get back to full strength. I don't really know if, uh, you know, the NHL was supposed to be off the 24th and the the 25th. Will one, two days before that really make much of a difference? We've already seen here today the Bruins lost Brandon Carlo. They haven't played since last Thursday. Um, They were together Friday. It's now Tuesday, so another case popping up. Whether or not this will be uh, enough time for the NHL to – um, recover, get back on track, get teams back to where they can not just play, but not continue to spread uh, the virus. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I know there has been talk about, you know, asymptomatic testing and, and just kind of powering through. But like Bruce Cassidy said, even if guys are mild symptoms, there's still the risk of, of spreading things around and uh, nobody really wants that to happen, especially with unvaccinated family members. Um, Yeah. I think that's pretty much it for 
the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast today, Tuesday. Sorry, just had to let my kid in there. Um, yeah, that's the latest on the Bruins. I did want to mention, of course, as those of you who follow Locked NHL Bruins might have seen, kind of rebranding for the holidays. Uh, and we're really going to be focusing on Fabian Lysel of the um, WHL's Vancouver Giants. He will be representing Team Sweden at the World Junior Championship. Uh, so far with the Giants, he has 11 goals, 17 assists for 28 points through 23 games. He is one point back of Justin Surdiff. Uh, for the team lead in points. Surdiff was a 2020 third round draft pick of the Florida Panthers. And um, I believe Lysel is the only Bruins prospect who will be appearing at the World Junior Championship. That gets underway uh, Boxing Day. And uh, I will certainly keep you covered when it comes to his performance at the World Juniors. Uh, let's just take a look and see when Sweden will play their first game. They are scheduled to play against, uh, Russia on boxing day from Red Deer, Alberta, 4 30 PM Eastern time. So definitely be watching that game and, uh, next Monday, keep you posted on everything that transpired. Uh, and just, yeah, take a look at the, the, uh, tournament as a whole. That would be. Uh, something exciting. The Spengler Cup is another holiday tournament that I like to watch, but they, um, Team Canada anyways, won't be appearing at that due to COVID concerns. Former Bruin Ryan Spooner was supposed to play for Canada in that one. Anyways, that is it for today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Thank you for sticking with the podcast through these crazy times. I hope that I can bring uh, some distraction levity to the situation if you're looking for something to watch yellowstone fans should definitely check out 1883 we watched the first episode of that last night um it's the prequel for the um yellowstone series going back well to 1883 when the dutton ranch uh, i believe was founded um and also i finished money heist yesterday a very epic show uh, based in Spain. If you haven't seen that yet on Netflix, do check that out. Might rewatch Leftovers. I started that again last night. Um, and yeah, just reading also uh, a very popular fantasy series that I loved when I was in high school, seeing if it holds up, The Belgariad by David Eddings. Some Lord of the Rings vibes to that one, but just needed something to yeah bring some joy and uh, remind me of simpler times, and uh, that's doing it. So, yeah, thanks so much for, for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, if you have any mailbag questions, please do send those in. And in the meantime, please do take care, and uh, thanks again for, for tuning in. If you're looking for a second listen today, do check out Locked on Bets. They have you covered for all the daily, um, yeah, betting purposes and uh, some tips there to – to help you get on the winning thing side of things today. Thanks for listening again. It's Locked On Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.